everybody. As you can see, I am recording from a different location this morning. And that's because it's still pretty early. It's just after 7 a.m. where I am. And yeah, my son is still asleep. <laughs> he should be up soon, but I didn't want to wake him. So I moved into another room to do this. But as many of you may have seen, and if you didn't see, link below in the description, I interviewed Coach Bronson uh, last night um, on my channel. And Pixel's about to jump up here. So get ready for that. Yep, here she is. <laughs> She's got to get involved. <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah, she's got to get involved and she's got to bite my arm. Um, okay. So I interviewed Coach Bronson uh, last night. I interviewed Coach Bronson last night. Link down below in the description if you did not see that because Coach Bronson dropped like so much knowledge, right? Um, it was an hour and 45 minutes. And he said a lot of things that really hit home with me. And one of the things he talked about, for an example, is stress and how life is basically either one of three things in terms of stress. Your body is either getting ready to experience stress, experiencing stress, or recovering from experiencing stress. And so if you know that, then you need to think of everything in life in terms of like a cost benefit analysis. So things are going to be stressful, like exercise is stressful, but is it more of a cost to you to exercise or is it more of a benefit? And for sure, the answer is benefit. <laughs> so um, whereas not exercising is also a stress, but if you choose to not do that, then you're definitely going to pay a cost for that, right? In, in quite a few ways, which I don't want this video to become super long. I'm sure you guys can, can, can think about that on your own, although that sparks, you know, many thoughts um, in my mind. Um, and so knowing that, I, I'm definitely going to make a concerted effort um, to get some exercise. Now, you know, I've done my fitness challenges. I have been exercising. I have not been tracking really though. I have not been monitoring improvements. And that's another thing Coach Bronson talked about. So he talked about that it's not something that should take like this insane amount of time out of your life. Um, and he gave me some examples. And so, you know, I'm not a wellness coach, a fitness coach, a health coach, any kind of coach, <laughs> um, but he is, right? So I'm gonna take his advice. <laughs> Um, so he was talking about this, basically the seven basic functional movements. Um, and those are going to be things that you're going to need to do in your everyday life. And so as I am aging, I do not want to end up getting more and more decrepit and unable to do things. And so those seven basic movements that the coach talked about were, um, squatting, lunging, hinging at the waist pushing, pulling, carrying, and rotating, squatting, lunging, hinging, pushing, pulling, carrying, rotating. Yep, that's seven. <laughs> I was listening, Coach Bronson. <laughs> I'm a good student. <laughs> so uh, yeah, those were the seven. Uh, and I thought, all right, if those are the seven things I need to do, then I need to incorporate that into my, into my workout routine. We also talked about how strength training is one of the most important things for women over 40 to do because muscle is the organ of longevity because if you don't strength train and keep up with that muscle, you are not going to be able to continue to do the things that you want to do. And you don't want to be invited to do something and wonder Am I going to be able to do this, right? You want your body to be able to do the things that you want to do. And with that being said, we also talked about like rest and the importance of rest and a good workout schedule that includes working out and the rest. Um, I've been very guilty of when I start a new workout um, routine that I go hard, like I don't really give myself much rest, like maybe one day of rest a week, if that, and, uh, and then I burn out and then I quit. 
Um, so I wasn't doing my body any favors by not giving it the rest. Now, the reason for that is, let's see if I listened again to Coach Bronson, but basically when you're doing the work, you want to do enough work that your body, you know, it's a little bit difficult for your body to complete that work. And so you're giving your body the signal to say, I need you to perform like this. And then your body goes, all right, you need me to perform like that. And then when you give the body the rest afterwards, your body's like kind of programming itself to get ready so that the next time your body's like, all right, you told me that you needed me to do this and I can do that now. And then you push it again to the next level so that you should be increasing like by a rep or by a pound or something a little bit kind of turning up that knob um, each time that you work out. But you don't, you shouldn't be working out every day. So he gave me this example. So let's say you're doing leg day, then you're doing like upper body day, then you're taking a rest day. Then you kind of repeat that leg day, upper body day, rest day. Um, that's kind of kind of the pattern there that he gave me to do. So I, I'm going to be doing that. I started today. Um, I will be kind of vlogging every so often, although I am going back to work the day after tomorrow, you guys. I've been on a Christmas break for the last three weeks. Um, but yeah, school starts again Monday, but I am going to be doing my best to record my progress. I did take some measurements. I'm not going to worry about the scale but I did take some measurements of my areas that I want to target. So specifically, we talked about the fact that I'm a pear shape as well. And he gave me three exercises that I just need to like laser focus on those three. So for today, here's what I did. So this will be kind of like a my plan slash day one, all in one video. <laughs> so what I did today was I did squats. I did lunges and I did deadlifts. And that actually targets three of those functional movements because, well, squatting and lunging, right? Th those were two. And then the deadlifts are the hinging motion. Um, so targeting, you know, three of those and carrying because guess what? I didn't do them body weight only. So here is where I started. Actually, I didn't do them in that order. The first thing I did was deadlifts. Deadlifts are one of my favorite exercises. I did those deadlifts with 24 pounds in each hand, um, and I did three sets. So three sets of deadlifts, 12 repetitions per set with 24 pounds in each hand with some rest in between. I also did lunges. So I did lunges with nine pounds in each hand um, for a total of 18 pounds. I did 10 repetitions, you know, per leg, right? Um, three sets, three sets of 10 repetitions per leg, holding a total of 18 pounds. And then I did my squats, basically same weight, same reps, right? Except you're doing squats. So 10 reps per set for three sets, holding again, nine pounds per hand for a total of 18 pounds. So I did all of that and then I went outside. Oh my gosh, you guys, it was 34 degrees. Yeah, frost was on things. Like the cars had frost, the roofs had frost. I went out in my little tank top and uh, like three quarter length um, leggings and sprinted. Um, and I'm doing something kind of new with that. Um, so shout out to the carnivore soldier, Larry. I'm pretty sure it was him. Sorry if it wasn't him, but I'm pretty sure it was him who gave me this idea. Yeah, so I downloaded an app on my phone and uh, I'm currently using my phone to record. <laughs> I think it's called like Random Timer or something like that. Uh, I'll look it up and report that to you in a future video. I didn't even know the name of it though. Um, and I like found it in my app store. Um, but what it does is it allows you to set like a minimum time and a maximum time. Um, so like today, I set the minimum time for 12 seconds and the maximum time for 22 seconds. And then when you hit start, it just starts a timer for like some random time between, in this case, 12 and 22 seconds. Um, it makes my sprinting so much more fun. 
So I did eight sprints. I don't remember, you know, the length of time for, for each and every sprint, but I can tell you it was eight sprints and each one was between 12 to 22 seconds long. Um, it's kind of fun because you just, you hit start and then you just take off sprinting. And then, you know, when the timer goes off, you stop, but you never really know how long it's going to be. So you just push yourself until you hear the timer go off. And um, yeah, that's like, it's like kind of up the level in both I don't know, enjoyment and intensity, I would say, um, for my sprinting. So I went out and did eight sprints. And um, the other thing that I'm going to do, and this is something I haven't done in a long time, is I'm going to track my protein and fat. Here's why. Because Coach Bronson talked about this thing that he called one to one to one. Okay. Go back and watch the interview with him. He was spilling all the knowledge, you guys. Um, but he talked about kind of getting a starting point. Um, he talked about how to get to that starting point and it has to do with like your percentage of body fat, you know, take your percentage of body fat, subtract that off. Um, so the number of pounds you are in lean mass, that's how many grams of protein and fat, um, that you're going to need each day. But he also said for women that are sort of anywhere close to 100 pounds, like he doesn't want us going below 100 grams. So my current target is to hit 100 grams of protein and 100 grams of fat each day, like minimum. I, you know, if I go up a little bit above that, it's not like if I go over that target, I'm going to be sad. Um, or anything like that. Um, but I'm, that's like, like a minimum. I'm going to try to go for somewhere between a hundred to 115, um, grams each day. And so if you don't track that, you don't know that. Now I'm going to say like some of these things could be an estimate. For example, currently in my oven, there is a standing rib roast. So that's like ribeye, but it's like not been cut into steaks. So it was like five pounds when I, and, and I used some butter like in the cooking of that. When I cut that thing, um, I don't have a kitchen scale. Um, I know what a pound of ribeye pretty much looks like because I've been, you know, I've, you, you know, you buy the ribeyes in those packages and you kind of know. Um, I'm going to be aiming to eat a pound of that ribeye roast um, for dinner. I, I, I don't have a scale. If I had a kitchen scale, I might do that, right? But I don't. Um, currently, maybe I'll get one before this is over. I don't know. Uh, but I'm going to estimate that I'm going to eat a pound of ribeye and I'm going to have to estimate that it's going to be about a tablespoon ish of butter because I don't know since I just made the whole roast, right? And like put butter on it. Um, I can't 100% measure. So I'm not going to be super like, you know, about the tracking, but but I haven't tracked at all in a really long time. Now, this is not tracking for calories. I don't care about that. Um, I'm really going to try to hit those macros that he talked about because he said, if we do that, and then we may need to tweak, but if we do that, you know, we can bust through or break through any kind of stalls that we've been having. So I'm going to give it a go, you guys. So today is January 6th. I did that first workout today. Tomorrow, I will be working on upper body. So my plan, because the functional movements again, right, I'm going to be doing some pushing by doing the push-ups, okay? I'm also going to be, he talked about rotation, but like anti-rotation, so strengthening your core. So push-ups are good for core. Um, I will probably throw in a plank. I haven't planked since November. I mean, I might have done a couple planks in December, but I haven't been doing planks consistently. Um, and then again, I'm going to lift some heavy things. So I'm going to pull out those dumbbells again. I've got to kind of figure out the weight on those, but I'm going to work on some biceps, some triceps, some shoulders, and some chest with those um, dumbbells. So I will let you know. And you know, I forgot to kind of report in how long my workout took today. Um, so that whole workout with the squats, the deadlifts and lunges and sprints, took um, about 35 to 40 minutes. I should have done a better job keeping track. It was like 35 to 40 minutes though um, that that took. So I'll keep be keeping track of that too. I don't, I'm not the kind of person that wants to set aside an hour, an hour and a half. I don't want to go to the gym. It's something I want to be able to do relatively quickly um, and, and be done. And I do like fitting in fitness throughout the day. Um, 
you know, but when I pull out those weights, I don't want to pull those in and out of the cupboard. Um, and so I want to be doing those exercises with, you know, with the weights. And so I figured I just need to suck it up, buttercup, pull the weights out of the cupboard um, and do those things. And so I'm going to give this a go um, with the, you know, the upper body, lower body rest day, like kind of thing. Um, also, I want to keep it consistent the days of the week. So I'm going to be doing Saturday, lower body, Sunday, upper body, Monday, rest, and then cycle through again. So Tuesday, lower body, uh, Wednesday, upper body, Thursday, rest, and then Friday, I don't know. So, it, but I'm not going to go back to lower body. I'm going to maybe do some sprints, maybe do some jump ropes. I don't know. Uh, something to that effect. I'll let you know when I figure it out. I'm going to think about it because I just kind of want to get that rhythm going. So that way, Saturday, I can go back to lower body again. Plus, in his example, he talked about like two days of lower and two days of upper body. Uh, maybe, maybe on that last day, I can focus a little more on my core because twisting was one of the motions. I can do some Russian twists, things like that. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I'll figure it out. Um, so yeah, this is my plan as well as my vlog, <laughs> um, kind of for what I did today. Um, I'm not going to be doing like a daily vlog. That's a lot, especially going back to work. Um, but I'll try to keep you guys posted once a week. I want to show you like the improvements, right? So like what he talked about, do your, th the thing that's hard, which you guys, my legs were shaky and kind of jelly feeling after I was done. So I'd say it was hard. Do the thing that's hard. Give your body adequate rest. The next time you come back, you're not lengthening the time that you're doing it, but you're upping the weight or upping the reps um, each time. And your body should be able to keep up with that. So I will keep you up with that and let you know, you know, how those things are improving, um, how those numbers are increasing each time. So if you decide to do anything like this with me, I am not an expert. I got all of this from Coach Bronson um, last night. Go watch that video, link below. Uh, join me if you want. Just watch me if you want. Um, I'll let you know, you know, as this is progressing, uh, yeah, how it's going. So I guess I'm going to go and meet some wellness one leg day at a time. <laughs>